Hello and welcome to another painting tutorial. This time on how I freehand painted these flames, in my case on my salamanders, but you can apply this to anything you like. Small shout out to at Liam Paintstuff, who in my opinion did the best job so far on replicating the Forge World flame style that you can see here on actual salamanders and he's also the guy where I took most of my inspiration from when I did these freehands. So let's start with the colors I've used. I use mostly scale 75 paints for this, in this case deep red, blood red, sol yellow and then I use Vallejo orange red as an in-between, just because I don't have a bright orange from scale 75. I like to use scale 75 paints for this because the finish is really really matte and I really like how it looks on a freehand, especially over something like a GW color which are a bit more satin. Another plus in my opinion is that scale 75 paints are actually quite transparent colors and this makes life way easier when doing a freehand like this where you work with different layers of paint, especially with a flame where there's like kind of a lot of depth but you can't really place it in a 3D environment so it's it's really nice to have the ability to layer paints over and over and over without them making these hard edges and hard lines like you have three sheets of paper that are laid over each other. It just looks more natural and has a nicer dynamic to it in my opinion. In the video you can already see me working on the flame on his shoulder pad. I'm working over the decal. You could do this as a freehand on itself but I have the decals and I use it as a reference just to have a similar look on every marine. I just outline the contours of the decal with deep red. Don't worry about the exact contours, just go over it a bit. The main thing is that you keep this a bit transparent so you don't have a hard edge on the flame. And then I work from the outside to the inside. So the next step will be the blood red and then the orange red and then yellow in the middle. And that's one of the most important things to remember when painting flames. And here's where I regretted that I put on the number decal directly over the flame decal and not waited until I finished the freehand and put it over the freehand because now I have to work the yellow around that number and that's not the easiest and I really don't want to paint over the number again later on. And I noticed that it's actually quite hard to film close-ups like this so I had to discard a lot of footage because it was only my glasses and the side of my face instead of the model. But yeah, that's where we are and I hope the talking helps a bit to understand what I'm doing. And here you can see the result from another model. This one looks a bit better than the one I did for the video, so I'm showing this one. And now I'm showing one of my first flame free hands. Uh, this one's a bit more cartoony. You can see this one has uh, really strong edges and the yellow is way bigger than on the other flames. Uh, if that's a look you like, you can go for that. It's way easier to do because you don't have to do any fades and any blending. It's just about blocking the flame contours in and then work your way up the color scale to, to yellow. Now I'm going to show you how to paint flames like the ones on this banner. I really like to do them on the legs of the Space Marine because you have quite a lot of space and it's a nice curve to do them on. I always start with glazing a bit of deep red over the whole surface I'm going to do the flames on. This is just to create the atmosphere, to create the start, to yeah, mess up the blends of the green a bit so I, I'm not afraid to paint over it again. It's like the icebreaker in a sense and it helps to yeah, set the stage for the flames. And then I'm going to paint in the flames with slightly thicker paint. And here you can see me doing with the blood red already. So it's the same step before with the deep red. Just paint like these swooshes, these flame swoosh swooshes, how you like them to look. Create the outline of the flames. Don't be too strict with yourself. Just paint them as you see fit. You can always change them up. And yeah, here I'm showing you the banner in between. Just that you can take a look at the forms of the flames. So these are small snakes of flames everywhere. And don't forget to put in a few branches like on a tree uh, going off from the flames, from different strains of the flames. And at the beginning, this takes a little time to figure out the right balance between long strains of flames and small ones, but you always have to do it a few times also to match the surface to get a nice balance between like the 
overall shape of the of the lac and the surface you are painting on. So the next painting step will actually be the same just with the orange red from Vallejo and then again the same with sol yellow from scale 75. And don't take this too much as a step by step. You will have to go over it again and again and don't restrict yourself too much on the contours you set before. Try to go over the deep red with the orange and go over the orange again with the blood red and just do swatches over swatches, switching between the colors until you achieve the right balance for you. The most important thing is that you don't go too wild with the yellow because otherwise it looks a bit strange if you have too much brightness in the flame. With the orange and the two reds you can't really go wrong with mixing and matching them and I think it's really important to, to go a bit wild with the orange and tone it back down with the two reds. So put in a few orange swatches over the reds and then go back in with the red and contain the orange again. So if you want to do the next step I'm showing you, which are painting some coals in the flames, you have to go a bit bigger on the yellow because if you don't paint enough yellow it won't be noticeable at all in the end. So for this step I first use black green again to paint the outlines of the coals and these don't have to be precise, they are so small, it just has to be the idea of these uh, coal shapes. And when I'm done with that I'm going to go back in with a mix of black green and black to paint the insides of the coals so that the contours will stay black green and the insides are a bit darker and this creates a small fade again so they aren't too harsh on the flames and they don't stand out too much. And on the one I filmed I actually missed a step that I always did on the other ones and that's a glaze with the deep red at the end. So normally I just glaze over the top of the flames again with the deep red or go heavier on the glaze in the beginning so it fades out a bit more and here in the picture you can see the actual difference. It is far less noticeable in real life than it is in this picture but there is actually a difference if you if you go back in with, with this glaze to fade them out. But if you go in with pigments in the end to tie the feet into the base this won't be too noticeable and you don't have to worry about it if you if you miss it. And that's it. I hope this could help you in a way if you want to replicate this. I know that the video footage isn't the best to work along with, and that's why I put in the pictures at the end and I really would recommend to just look at the pictures and try to replicate what you see with the process in mind. That's the easiest way to learn. I'm still figuring out the filming and I hope that in future tutorials the footage will be better and more usable if you want to paint along or something like this. But for now that's it and I hope you liked the video, if you have any questions feel free to leave them in the comments and hope you stick around, bye!